Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm looking at some of the tips and tricks that I use to keep my shooting rolling through the winter months. But first up, it's back to the autumn and I'm heading out on what turns out to be a brilliant session after Corvids. Right, I'm out after Corvids today. I've got a hide that I've quickly thrown up behind me and I'm just putting out a few decoys. Um, I'm gonna use shell decoys, firstly because they're nice and light to carry, so if I want to use a dozen or so, they're not gonna really weigh me down. But also these Jack Pike ones have got a sprung peg, which means if there's a little bit of breeze, the decoys bob, it gives them a bit of movement and I'm convinced that the more movement you can get into your decoys, the more appeal they have. Now, the, the existing attraction here is there's a recently drilled crop, fresh seed on the other side of the hedge. Now, unfortunately, the farmer doesn't want us trampling around on that, but I should be able to get around it because just adjacent to my hide is a hedge that runs away, and that's, that's the hedge that's dividing us from the field with the crop in it. Um, and there's a lovely city tree with a nice dead top, and I think we're putting a few decoys out. I can persuade the uh, corvids to settle into that tree before they drop down to feed and hopefully we can shoot them from there. Um, as I said, it's getting completely hammered. It's mostly crows, rooks and jackdaws. There may be a chance of pigeons too. Um, the hide is a very simple net hide. I'm not gonna mess about dressing it with any vegetation because to be honest with you, I wanna get into it as quickly as possible and minimize any disturbance out here. Right, so as I've already explained, we can't actually shoot from in the, uh, the field that's had the wheat drilled in it, but this is such a prominent city tree that I think with a few decoys underneath, birds are going to land in it. Now, it's about 45 metres from my hide, so it's a relatively long shot, so I'm using the FAC-rated Daystate Red Wolf, um, and that's a comfortable range for this gun. Now, obviously, I'm taking shots up into a tree, but I've got a huge fallout zone. It's a massive estate. I know what's behind where I'm shooting. And more significantly, this gun's producing just over 30 foot pounds, but I'm using it with relatively light 16 grain, two, two pellets. And they don't carry a lot of momentum at that weight. They quickly run out of steam. It's great out to about 60, 65 meters, but once it gets out to, out to significant range, they're just gonna start falling and tumble relatively quickly. Um, the gun is cu coupled with an MTC Mamba light scope, which I use virtually all of the time with this gun, and that's held on as ever with sports match scope mounts. An important thing shooting over what is a longer than usual distance for me is I've got the stick set up, so I'm just shooting from the stability of that tripod, which is just gonna help so much with keeping my aim rock steady. There is a slight breeze today, but nothing too significant, so that shouldn't make too much of a difference. Um, I don't want to talk too much, the crows aren't going to put up with it, so I'm going to try and keep quiet now and hopefully we'll shoot a few. We're dealing with wary birds here today, but they're desperate to get back onto that seed drill and it's not long before one pitches into the city tree. Well, that was a lovely start. Um, crow came gliding in straight over the top of the decoys, pitched into the city tree where it obviously felt safe, presented me with a really nice clear shot. I gave it a touch of holdover, hit it with an absolute wallop, and that's a really nice clean kill to kick off with.
there's another one. The combination of the decoys and the city tree is working an absolute treat. That one didn't know what had hit it, just dropped like a stone. This type of shooting usually takes real patience, but the action is coming thick and fast today, and this time it's a bonus pigeon. Brilliant. Pigeon that time. Now I didn't expect to see many woodies about because there are just so many corvids around, but it's always nice to bag something for the pot. And in all honesty, pigeons do just as much damage as the crows, if not more. Targeting a tree with dead or bare branches is a real help in terms of getting clear shots without leaves in the way, as you can see here. Well, there's no denying that the setup is certainly working. I've been in the hide for about two hours now and I must have had nine or ten crows. Um, I've had to break cover a couple of times to tidy up because dead birds on the ground can really put off incomers, especially if they've landed belly up with their legs in the air. So I've just gone out a couple of times, retrieved the shot birds. I haven't brought them back into the hide though. I've just basically positioned them upright as neatly as I can amongst the decoys just to add a bit of realism to the pattern. And well, it seems to be doing the trick. I'm having to be a bit more patient as the session wears on, but the birds are still flighting in pretty regularly. And another one. Um, certainly slowing down a bit now, but they're still showing a bit of interest, so there could still be more to be had.
And another crow. As I said after that previous one, the weight between shots now is really stretching out. They, they seem to be backing away somewhat. Um, that said, the setup has worked and I've certainly, I'm convinced that I've picked the right kit for the job. It's just making very easy work of the shots now when they're coming. Um, I've been in the hide for about three hours. Nikki needs to get away now, so it seems like a good time to wrap it up. What I'm gonna do is stick it out for another hour until the light starts to go, hopefully get one or two more. A great session in the hide there. Next up, I've got a few tips to keep your shooting on target through the winter months. A lot of shooters I talk to do a lot of hunting through the warmer months, but hardly get out at all during the winter. Now that sounds like complete madness to me because they're missing out on what can be the finest part of the year. So with that in mind, and in the hope of coaxing a few fair weather shooters out of their slumber, I thought I'd pull together a few of my top winter hunting tips. My first tip is to simply get out there. Now it's easy to come up with excuses when it's cold and wet outside, but if you wear the right kit, it's easy enough to stay warm and dry. Now, lack of time is another excuse that most of us band about at some time or other, but are you really that busy? If you've got the time to sit around watching videos on YouTube, you've probably got time to head out with your gun. You aren't going to shoot anything from the armchair, so get out there and you'll probably be rewarded for your perseverance. Right, on to the serious stuff. Now the biggest attraction to most quarry species at this time of year is food. There isn't much grub about as the weather turns colder, so if you can find an area that does offer your quarry an easy feeding opportunity, you're probably going to get a few shots. If you're targeting grey squirrels, try setting up a feeding station loaded with peanuts. This high protein food source will get the squirrels literally queuing up through the winter, giving you the opportunity to make some serious bags. Peanuts can be a pretty expensive bait to use, so try using maize and sunflower hearts too. Now if you want a really tight budget, wheat can also get squirrels coming in, especially in really cold weather when they're really hungry. In woods, where pheasants are reared for game shooting, you may not need to put out any feed of your own at all. Settle down close to the pheasant feeders and you'll probably catch up with a few grain raiding squirrels. With less daylight hours to shoot by, heading out after dark can be a great way to make optimum use of your time. It's one of the most effective ways of catching up with nocturnal quarry such as rats and rabbits. Keep yourself out with modern night vision gear and you'll be able to ambush your quarry from the cover of complete darkness. Although highly effective, High-tech night vision gear can be pretty pricey. If you can't justify the outlay, then give lamping a try. A scope-mounted lamp is far more affordable than a night vision optic, and this simple and effective method still works just as well as it ever did. One massive frustration when targeting rats is getting these fidgety rodents to keep still for long enough to offer you a clear headshot. One solution to the problem is putting some bait down along their runs. My absolute favourite ratting bait is liquidised cat food. It absolutely stinks and rats can't resist its fishy odour. Just as importantly, because it's liquid, they have to stop and lap it up giving you plenty of time to line up for that shot. Even if you're out on a daytime session, try to make the effort to stay out until darkness closes in. 
grey squirrels can become very active around dusk, so expect to see them on the move as the light starts to fade. And if you're targeting crows at the roost, don't be tempted to head for home too soon. These wily birds usually don't start to really pile in until it's almost too dark to see. My final piece of advice for winter shooting is to try to bag yourself a farmyard permission. A lot of farms suffer with feral pigeons around their barns and sheds. Now, agricultural buildings provide a great place to do some shooting even when the weather is really bad. And an air gun is just about the perfect tool for controlling pests inside them. That's just a handful of the tips and tricks that I use to keep my shooting rolling through the winter months. So, stop making excuses, get yourself an outing lined up, wrap up warm and get on out there. If you don't, you won't know what you're missing. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine. Packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.